Hey everyone. Let's uh, see what we've got here. All right, first listen. Okay, cute. Um, I think I would like to hear a little bit less parallel like rhythm between the two channels. So you can see four four one one four four one one, which is being mirrored by zero zero three three zero zero three three over here. So just finding a way to mix that up a little bit. So instead of groups of four or groups of two and two, why don't we try a group of three? So so the four is acting as kind of an accent. So let's move that accent as like a group of three. Okay, we'll have to control the, we'll mirror the rhythm of the instruments with the volume. So that'll be two, one, one. Yeah, I think I, I like that better. And then now the work is just expanding on this a little bit. So I'm hearing a repeat, I think. So, so zero, zero, and zero, one repeat. And then we'll have a, a variation here. What's this? Oh, I think that's what that was. I might have been demonstrating that at the end of last session. Okay, let's get rid of this. Oops. This will be 10. We'll keep the same harmonic motion, but we're going to change like the counterpoint between the melody and the bass. start with just the melody. Oh, okay, okay, now I need to remember what key we're in here. Looks like F sharp. So let's try... Okay, so that's the original. start with that line. And okay, now I'm just going to change the bass. Let's move this up the octave. And let's move this down a third. Okay, now let's hear what that sounds like in sequence. Oh, it looks like I was editing nine. Yeah, so okay, so we just swap these. Like a, an A B 
kind of call and response type thing. Uh, what is happening here? Oh, I know what's happening. It's because it's repeating. It's repeating here. So actually, what I can do is just take this and actually let's just take this and we'll move this to the back end. Turn off that loop. Yeah, and then I think, so there's kind of like our first phrase, and then in 10 we make even more, create even more contrast with the melody and the bass. So, and then let's change the bass a little bit more, um, uh, I don't know, create more harmonic um, contrast in the bass. So we're just kind of like moving around F sharp and, and D sharp. The other thing I could try is like, what if I put the melody in the bass? So what's this? So what if I made See if this kind of inverts. That could be cute. Let's now, uh, let's listen back and I'm, then we'll start filling in the melody. Okay, so there's my instrument. Usually just copy and paste, you know, something that I, I'm not going to use these notes, but I know I'm going to use this information. So I just copy and paste it from another SFX just to get the ball rolling. Let's move it up the octave. Okay, that's probably not it, but now we've got something to work with. Okay, let's... 
let's uh And then let's make uh, this base part here the same as this to kind of lead into the loop back uh, to the beginning of the phrase. trying to find the right flow here. And then that'll loop back. Yeah, so something, uh, something off balance in here. note. As I mean, that's a good example of, um, like, I think that can't remember all the pathways that I've taken, but I think that I copied this melody in from uh, this bass pattern. I copied it in from the melody. And as I'm working through it, I'm realizing that, well, the melody and the bass, for whatever reason, just it doesn't quite work. Uh, but rather than sticking to that structure of saying, no, I want, I really want that melody, you just start 
changing it. So I just use the melody in the bass as a starting point. And then as the development goes on and the process unfolds, then you just start making changes to that until it, it does start working. Okay, so now I have an idea. So I'm not, I don't think that is the final version. It's close, but there's something in SFX 10 that's slightly off. But I'm just gonna keep on moving forward and I'll deal with that maybe next session. So what we can do here is as a kind of a continuation of the idea, there's a, a few different pathways that we can explore. One is to just do a straight up repeat, maybe with, uh, um, well, yeah, probably a straight up repeat um, with an added layer, which is what I'm going to uh, try. And the other pathway eventually, maybe at 04, is to start ex expanding the melody and the harmony even more, and also maybe experiment with the, the rhythm of the 0033-0033. Uh, but for now, let's uh, add, I think, just like a, a simple drum beat. So let's just, it's going to be simple. <clears throat> and we're going to have it because that's a much better kind of kick sound. And if it's at the normal speed of everything else, just just lasts a little bit too long. And then put this up here, maybe with noise. Loop this. Yeah, simple. And I mean, now that we're now that we're here, we can see about maybe using this space as well. Or, or not, uh, I am I have a tendency to fill in the space for better or for worse, so I'm gonna at least explore it. Um, okay, now let's hear what it sounds like with that kind of reveal. So from pattern zero, zero, and just to see if that makes sense moving from 01 to 02, and if the adding of the drums adds to the repeated phrase. Yeah, I like it. I think what I will do though is, hmm, it's so nice to have the the double time SFX because you can do things like this. That, that don't, don't, we can't do that. I wouldn't be able to do that if it was speed 28. Hmm.
But I was also thinking of... Like, what if I took took this this melody and moved it up the octave? A different instrument. too much. So we're adding a we're adding a drum layer, but now we're also adding a melodic layer. Okay, so now again, this is why I'm thinking about just moving this to 28 is because now that this is on repeat, I because I like how this is this melody is running in parallel to this melody, but it's going to it's going to loop. So on its second time around, it's not going to be in parallel anymore. It's cool, but I'm not, I don't think that's the, I don't think that's what I'm going for. So what I'll do, I'm going to save 11. This is going to, this is going to open up a whole pathway uh, of sound design and things I need to do because, because I don't like that sound of the kick. So I need a, a custom instrument for that. And I, uh, maybe we keep the snare like that. So well, let's start with the let's start with the uh, snare or the uh, kick. I think it was at fourteen, right? Okay, so now we go into here and change these to two. I don't need the drop. Actually, that's not I, that's not the SFX. <laughs> I made the same mistake. I always I always do it on the wrong SFX. What's my volume at here? So let's increase that volume. Now, now these are actually going to look to be in parallel. Um, five, whoops. Oh my gosh, it's the wrong SFX again. This one.
maybe without the slide. The slide is cute, but it means I don't have the snare here. Now let's move over the second half. Okay, so now this is the instrument, these double fives, and now I'm just gonna copy that into these melodies here. up the octave. I mean, I might cave and just put this as a, its own instrument as well. Unless I can, what does it sound like with instrument zero? I don't think I like it as much. What other instruments do I have? What's one doing? Oh, maybe, uh, Maybe instrument 01. Okay, let's try that for a little bit. Just means I just have a little bit more control. I also, I have this saved here too, if I wanna reference the original sound of that melody. I really like that kind of nasally sound that's coming out of here, so. Mm. So now it's a question of like, well, do I just put that in here? Like I would recreate that sound. Whoops. I think it's with buzz. Loop it. Okay, so now let's try it with instrument three, custom instrument three. I copied the entire thing. Just wanted this part.
So the question for me is, is the reverb on the SFX contributing this? Because that was one of the reasons why I was going to just add it to the SFX here. So and I'm going to say it's not a huge difference. So I'm going to go back to the original sound. This will be the last thing I do. Actually, no, the last thing I'll do will be, I'm gonna put this here just so I remember it. I really like, I really like that slide. I think that's really cute. Um, I can't use it in the current setup. So I'm gonna, the last thing I'm definitely gonna do is take this and is now just change these notes like this. Trying to use the mouse less. This is just—it's just so much more enjoyable. You can do things on the keyboard. Okay, now I need to put it up the octave. Uh, I think that was wrong. There we go. Okay, up the octave. See, if this was a custom instrument, I wouldn't have to do that work. It would just been a, one simple change in the custom instrument to move it all at the octave. Okay. Okay, pretty good session. We, um, we changed the melody of SFX8 just so there's a little bit more rhythmic contrast between the two SFX. We added this new SFX, which is like a kind of a, a makes a call and answer type mel melody structure, A and B. And then we repeat that call answer structure, but with now a drum layer and a melodic layer just to, yeah, add that dimension. And next session will be probably creating even another section. So we've got this A, B, A, B. So we're going to need a C, probably a C, D, C, D type thing with a little bit more adventurous harmonic and counterpoint and maybe even different rhythmic contrast between the bass and the melody. So next session might be a bit of a grind in exploring exactly, exactly, exactly how to write that counterbalance of that uh, section C. So, uh, but yeah, so far I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy with the, with uh, where this is going. Okay. See you next week.